Hi, Patty. How are you today? Excellent. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I want to tell everyone that you have the coolest business card I think I've ever had the pleasure to receive. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it is so neat. It's a neat shape. It's beautiful. It has actionable items on the back. It has a really neat format. I think that probably says a lot about you as a person. Very multifaceted, very um, intentional with how you show up in the world, beauty way, but also outcomes. Do you think your business card is a reflection of who you are? Um, I would say it's true. There was a certain, you know, definitely a certain element and getting ideas from different sources putting it all together and making it happen rather quickly because I wanted to have them for an event that I was going to and the event was coming up in a few days so I actually had someone on Fiverr do it and it was very fast and then used overnight prints. So. so you also have ease and grace and effortlessness built into your process too. I love that. It was cool. That's what I tell myself. Yes, I affirm <laughs> that I have ease and grace. <laughs> Well, welcome again. It's so fun to talk and to, I'm excited to be recording this interview and bringing forth some of your story and message. Um, you have a really interesting story. You have such resiliency and light built into your journey and your walk in the world. You've created a um, beautiful book and um, a path to healing in new way. And so I just feel honored that you're here first and foremost. But I was hoping maybe you could tell... Um, Tell our audience a little bit about your story and what brought you to the place you are today. Well, sometimes our paths can be full of gravel and bumps and potholes and pitfalls. <laughs> and that was exactly my path to get to where I am today. And that it started in 2010 at the abrupt end of a marriage. And to preface, um, I was a, uh, I don't know if you'd even call it codependent. I was dependent upon my husband for my identity, uh, my sense of value, my sense of worth. I looked to him for love, so I didn't feel, you know, fulfilled unless I had um, validation, approval, acceptance from him. And all my routines were focused around him and what we did in our daily lives and family time. And when that all went away, I literally felt like I was in a nuclear wasteland. Mm -hmm. And I even kind of lost sense of a sense of time in place. I didn't feel like I belonged in the present moment. It didn't feel real. The future was completely unknown and the past seemed like it didn't exist. Uh, because there were um, there was infidelity, so there was betrayal and lies, and you wonder how far back did that go? And right. Can I really believe in anything that was true in that relationship? Right. So I knew that I could get through loss because I'd been through a lot of losses before, mostly through death. My parents both passed. I lost a dear friend. Um, you know, cousins uncles, you know, a lot of loss. So I knew that I could, there was always that like thought in the back of my mind. I had no idea how, and I also had no idea how just crippling and devastating the um, rejection and that loss of the marriage was going to be. Yeah. And I ended up, you know, just doing a lot of um, self-destructive things, numbing, a lot of numbing behavior knowing that I didn't want to do it. You know, it's that saying like ignorance is bliss. At least if I'd been ignorant, I would I could have just, you know, gone off and, and mindlessly engaged in all these behaviors, but I knew that I didn't want to be doing it, but I didn't know how to stop. Yeah. Um and then eventually over time, you know, and just self discovery and um learning some tools and techniques and then eventually going through life coach training. Um, where I was able to just gather all these um, tools and practices and apply them to myself for my own healing. Beautiful. But it was a 
it was a bumpy road for sure. I mean, my book is called Wine, Sex, and Suicide, My Near-Death Divorce. So, Tell us a little bit more about how that learning and that journey led to that book and how you, how you told that story. Well, the story I wanted to tell was about doing a year of volunteer service projects as a means of healing a broken heart. Okay. That's the story I wanted to tell. Okay. <laughs> the universe helped you tell a different one. <laughs> So the end, you know, of the relationship came in October, and, you know, for 16 out of the 17 years, we'd always spent Christmas with his family. I didn't think I was going to survive Christmas. Okay. Somehow, I came up with this idea to go to Romania and volunteer at an orphanage. Wow. So I did that, and that was an amazing and wonderful experience, and I, you know, was writing. I've always been a journal person, and I wrote about that experience, um, and then when I got back from that trip, I thought, okay, let me, I want more of that. I want more of that feeling. So let me sign up for as many volunteer projects as I can, and I'll write about it. And, you know, with journaling, it, it's, it's truth. It's authentic. It's real. And so then when I was going out, you know, to the bars and, and over drinking and picking up strangers, that all went in the journal too because that was the real picture of what it looked like and I didn't want to gloss anything over because I'd seen so many stories of women who um, had made it through this you know this divorce or this heartbreak and they seemed so put together and so happy and they would talk about you know their new amazing love and the businesses they started and everything was just on this upswing and life was grand and my experience just wasn't like that at all I mean I was collapsed on the floor yeah. shaking you know had like three prescriptions prescribed to me for just you know stopping the anxiety that was overwhelming yeah I couldn't eat I lost 20 pounds um I mean, it really, it shattered my, my soul. Yeah. And I, it, then it kind of ties back into when I was a little girl and I was 11 and I knew that I wanted to write a book that would help people. Mm. And for some reason I specifically had in mind helping adults and, you know, at 11, like you have no, no wisdom to impart to any <laughs> grown up, you know? And so really for me, it's like this soul fulfillment that, spoke to me when I was a child and then for whatever reason I didn't listen to the, the call until mm -hmm. this experience so really it was like a beautiful way you know kind of like the beautiful gift gift wrapped in an ugly you know package <laughs> um, to you know to fulfill that and I mean my greatest hope is that it will help someone who's in the dark night of their soul not feel alone because I just felt tremendously isolated and alone like I was an anomaly for you know behaving the way I was behaving for being so crushed and for having the feelings that I was feeling absolutely granting yourself some permission to actually be exactly where you were with the journey looking the way it does and yet there is this taboo to you have to pick yourself up and you have to shine this bright light. Has it been edgy or hard to be being a torchbearer for the not so fun side of heartbreak and loss? Um, I think I'm still in that path because uh, the book isn't out yet. Yeah. And so I think that each each day that goes by, I'm getting stronger to be able to to stand in that time yeah you know and to drop the ego of fear you know the the fear of being you know criticized or judged or um labeled or whatever it is you know just yeah. to keep shedding that and to keep focusing on that one woman who's going to read the book and yeah. feel like oh my god thank you because i thought i was going crazy yeah so if i just keep holding her in my mind um, it makes it easier and easier because, you know, then it's like, I've got to get this out. I've got to, yeah. I've got to share this story. Yeah. Oh, and, it's so exciting. Yeah. You know, in a way, the, the, the fact that 
most of the family kind of fell by the wayside has actually made that easier because if I was still in great contact with his family, it definitely, I don't know if I'd be able to, I don't know if I'd be able to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. The clean break almost helped facilitate the new chapter. Yeah. Well, not having read the book yet, although I look forward to it, what are some of the key tenets, um, in, you know, in addition to um, just reflecting the reality, the authentic story, and also granting permission? Are there pieces of yourself that were giving yourself guidance that you could have used when you were actually in the moment? Or is it pretty much a memoir style of just recapping how it unfolded? Um, it's not memoir, uh -huh. so there's no hindsight of the lessons learned. Okay. It's really just the, it's a, it's a journal. It's so a it's journal. It's a nonfiction journal, dated entries. Beautiful. Um, I'm working with a developmental editor, so it's, uh, there are some things that were, um, just shifting a little bit to kind of condense because. Sure. I wrote a lot. <laughs> um, and then the. The lessons learned are actually going to be in a forthcoming book called Soul Garden Healing, A Seasonal Guide to Healing from Heartbreak. Um, I and, love that. You're such a prolific creator. I love that these two will be coming on the heels of one another. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about the seasonal guide. Well, I used to live in Los Angeles and I moved to um, the Central Coast, to San Luis Obispo. Yes, we are neighbors. <laughs> And, you know, it's very open and rural, and there's tons of farming. And in L.A., you, know, you don't really see, you don't see much agriculture, right, at right. all. Everything's, you know, cement. And so I really became aware of the seasons while I was here. Yeah. And just, you know, that that idea started germinating, no pun intended. But there are a lot of yeah. like gardening puns because, or metaphors, because I've always enjoyed gardening. Yeah. And then... It just became so clear that that's exactly what I went through. You know, the first season was falling, where everything was falling out of control, and there's just chaos and disarray. And you know, imagine a windstorm when a leaf gets detached from a branch. You know, a family tree, and now this leaf is just swirling in, in frenetic chaos. And then, uh, I, when I went to Romania, and when your my emotions were frozen. Uh, much like Elizabeth Kubler Ross uh, stages of grief, yeah. um, that paralysis and just being frozen and numb, yeah. and you can't feel anything. And then um, defrosting hmm. is actually the most the most painful season because you're starting to kind of come back to life, mm -hmm. um, and that can be when you know for me there was self harm mm -hmm. um, and. It can be the most, you know, painful season. Um, so that's where that idea was was birthed that's, for that book. That's beautiful. And then um, I know you also mentioned that you have an a ebook potentially with some practices and some takeaways. Tell us a little bit about that. So that book is um, just a very actionable. Uh, 12 practices for, you know, to pick yourself up when you've been knocked to the floor, um, specifically geared for people who've been abandoned by love. Mm. Um, I, you know, I didn't have one of those, you know, conscious uncoupling breakups, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that would look like. Right. Mine was more like an amputation. Yeah. That's what it felt like to me that you yeah. know, my heart was just amputated. Yeah. Um, there was no closure. There was no explanation, really. Um, and, you know, granted, this is all. Sure. My dad was a very wise man, and he said there are three, three sides to every story yours, mine, and the truth. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we all have our own filter, right? So this is yeah. all. Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, but those practices are practices because the whole concept of practice is something that we do over and over and over. I think I used to hold on to the idea that if I just did something once, that's it, it would be fixed, you know, forever. But it's a practice continually. Yeah. 
and the accumulation of those practices that then lead to healing. Yeah. I love how you so effortlessly seem to merge those two elements. One, the natural world, which is about these cycles and these rhythms and these seasons and how much healing can come from connecting into that rhythm, like allowing yourself to be held in the cycles that are bigger than you with the practice component, which is how we then create our own cycles and rhythms, granting ourselves permissions for our own ebbs and flows and our own rhythms and cycles. So if, if a woman has found her way to this interview and she's in that dark night of the soul and really feeling that aloneness, what are a couple of recommendations for her of how to navigate that process? Um, I think, you know, one of the things that it's, it sounds so simple, but it is truly one of the practices that helped me the most was developing a practice of gratitude um, because no matter how low I was feeling, there was always, always something I had to be grateful for. And some days it was just, uh, my friend and I would joke, you know, at least we have our limbs. And, you know, we kind of were flippant about it, but, you know, seriously, like if I think about that, my God, I mean, I was a, I'm a healthy individual with, with limbs and all my senses intact and I had, you know, food, I had a roof over my head. I had, you know, my beautiful feline, um, creatures and writing five things in the morning and five things in the evening before you go to sleep. Even if you don't feel, even if you don't feel it in your heart, um, to come up with something, we can always come up with something and you're allowed to repeat things, you know. So in the morning, if you come up with five things and by night, you're just like, I can't come up with anything new. Just use the same ones from the morning. It's fine. Mm, it's I love a, that. A practice of doing that. Um, another uh, thing that is pretty crucial is um, asking for support. And... What I found was sometimes the people closest in that I had relationships with just for whatever reason couldn't be there as a support because of whatever was going on for them or how they fit into the you know larger puzzle piece of my marriage yeah. and the relationship. So um, going a little bit outside your you know, close circle of friends and family, you know, going a little bit outside of that to ask for support and looking a little bit outside of that is, is helpful. It's and of so course, huge. Online, online communities, um, there's lots of forums out there that can be very helpful for support as well. Um, another, I mean, extreme self-care, yeah. huge, huge, um, at, at you know that critical stage where you know if you've just gotten some some bad news, yeah, uh, where your heart is just feeling really heavy, um, that's the time to just cocoon, self protect, self love, um, being kind and gentle. I know we're so um, harsh on ourselves sometimes with judgment and um, you know just being tender and and kind to yourself and how you choose words for yourself and even just simple things like drinking a glass of water in the morning and having an affirmation of, I know I have the strength within me to get through this and drinking that water and kind of infusing that moment with the thought of, I know I have the strength within me. And if you don't feel like you have the strength within you, then just use the word possible. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it's possible I have the strength within me. Um, so powerful. I love that. And I love how these practices, they're just, they are universal truths. They give me chills as you say them. They certainly parallel how we create the potential and the possibility and the openness for healing and for transformation on all levels. And it's so reassuring on some level to hear how applicable and transformational they can be on the heart soul level as well 
Um, if there were one thing that you could go back and say to yourself, looking back on the journey that you've been on, if you could descend into one of those moments um, of amputation or shame or hurt or just fog, any of the kind of the deepest, darkest time, if there was something that you could say to yourself then, um, what would that what would that be? I think the thing that comes to mind that my that my soul knows now that would have spoken to me then would be um, just that this is all part of a greater purpose and divine plan. So just get through this it's going to be okay and all this suffering and all this pain is part of something that's going to be more beautiful that you can't see right now uh, that's really really profound and true i love that i love the idea of us all getting the chance to hear those words when we're, when we're in the rough time well thank you so much for joining me today i want to um Reiterate that we will post links beneath this interview where people can find you at Patty Blue Hayes, can find your written work and um, and follow your work. You also um, will be starting a coaching program that people can look for as well. And um, I look forward to keeping the discussion open. It's such an important part of the transformational journey that we share as humans, but especially as women, to honor the realities and the authentic nature of the bumpy roads as you describe them so thank you again so much for joining us thank you very much for having me so great bye-bye